It's a big day here at Chasing Cars. We're driving this, the new Honda CRV, Honda's entry into the all important midsize SUV segment taking on the likes of the Nissan X-Trail and the Toyota RAV4. It's bigger and more spacious than before, to the point that Honda has inserted a whole new model in between it and the small CRV, that is of course the ZRV. It's 69 millimeters longer, 11 millimeters wider, available in five and seven seat variants, with the cheapest ticket to seven seat CRV town being $46,800. The other big news with the new CRV is that it's an all turbo range now, all powered by a 1.5 5 liter turbo four cylinder producing 140 kilowatts and 240 newton meters with the exception of the range topping hybrid in this video we'll jump into the driver's seat have a poke and look around the new premium more spacious crv cabin get into the back seat show you that have a look in the boot and of course take the new crv for the all-important test drive if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit like leave any thoughts in the comments section below and also subscribe for more videos like this. For now though, let's get into it. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. Welcome to the driver's seat of the new Honda CRV. This is a much more spacious place to be than before and a lot more grown up and mature place to be. We don't have any crazy shapes or anime styling in this interior. It's very mature, very sensible and very premium as well. Here we've got a nine inch central infotainment touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. We've got digital instruments here, 10.2 inches in the upper spec models, seven inches in the lower grades. It's a much more spacious place to be, plenty of elbow room, knee room. There's a lovely driving position. Love this leather steering wheel as well. These seats, they're nice and comfortable, really lovely to sit in and, and, and offer great support as well. We've got a nine liter center console bin here with heaps of space. We've got a wireless charging tray with a USB-A and USB-C in the front here. It's a lovely spacious place to be. I love that they've kept some buttons and dials for the air conditioning controls, which click in a really nice way. No tapping at a screen to change the temperature here. Big points and thumbs up for Honda in that regard. If I had to level some criticism at the CRV's interior, it wouldn't be that. It's not as premium as it could be. We've got this wood trim here and piano black and then a big slab of dog nose plastic it is a little bit of kind of dark oppressive place it doesn't have that same posh and luxe feeling of something like a volkswagen for example and this shift lever here it's so tall and high it's so old school dragging it down into d if they could put something like the shift by wire of the civic hybrid into the center console here that would be a big improvement welcome to the back seat of the honda crv we've got oodles of room back here Honda says there's 15 millimeters more leg room and I can believe it. This is my driving position here and I've got tons of knee room, tons of foot room, good under thigh support. We've got a center armrest here with two cup holders. We've got two air vents with flow control only, two USB-A outlets. Two things I love about the second row of the Honda CRV are the sliding second row. You can go back and forward. If you need more boot space, you can just put the second row forward. If you need more knee room for two adults in the back, you can just put it back again. Very clever. And also the rear doors, they open up nearly 90 degrees, giving you huge, easy access to the second row. All right, now let's have a look at the boot. This is the largest ever boot a CRV has ever had. It's 67 liters bigger than before. We've got this very low boot lip floor. So if you're lifting something heavy up, you don't have to lift it too high and do your back. We've got a nice flat floor here. Underneath, there's a full-size spare wheel. Two little nooks and crannies on the ends. And there's 60-40 split-fold rear seats as well. Although, if I had to level a couple of criticisms, it would be there's no way of folding down the second row seats here. You have to go to the rear doors, which is kind of disappointing from Honda, who pioneered the magic seats in cars like the Jazz. Otherwise, there's plenty of space. Okay, so we're behind the wheel of the new Honda CRV. First impressions are really good. They say you can tell whether a car is good or not very good in the first couple of hundred meters. And that's definitely the case with this car. All the controls feel nice and lovely and exactly how you'd want them to feel. Not too grabby. The brake pedal feel is perfectly smooth. Absolutely delightful. I love the driving position as well. Not too cramped, got plenty of space here. The car itself, even though it's bigger than the previous generation Honda CRV, is not too big, not too small. It's just right. 
There's a little bit of a turbocharged personality to the engine. You can hear the turbo hissing away. You can even get a little bit of blow off valve noise too if you put the windows down, very fun. Acceleration is good, although it's not mind blowing. It's interesting, you often think of low down torque with a turbocharger engine, but in this one, it's like Honda's tuned the CVT to behave like a naturally aspirated car. Put your foot down, the revs rise right up. It almost feels like it doesn't have that low down torque of a normal turbocharged engine. Very interesting. I've had the new CIV out on a very twisty winding road and you can tell it's made by the same company that does the Civic Type R. The ride handling balance is absolutely amazing. If you're into driving, you will love the Honda CRV. That said, there is one thing that you might not love as much and that is the CVT gearbox. It's as kind of boring and one dimensional as it's ever been. There are steering wheel paddles and there are fake gears, but it just doesn't quite replicate that of a normal transmission. On the plus side though, this is a very easy car to drive, very smooth, lovely ride quality. It feels extremely well built and it's surprisingly quiet as well. Big marks to Honda for the refinement of the new CRV. It's very impressive. There is one small black mark on the refinement scorecard, however, and that is the engine noise. You're always aware that there's an engine in the front of this car. It's pretty noisy. You put your foot down and I wouldn't say that the acceleration is hair raising, but it's good enough. So to give a little bit of a verdict on how the Honda CRV drives, I really like it. It feels really, really good. The steering is nice and direct. The brake pedal feel is lovely. It's got nice smooth throttle tip in as well. The CVT is a little bit of a buzzkill and the engine can be quite loud at just car park speeds, but otherwise the refinement is top notch. Great ride quality, surprisingly quiet, a really nice car to drive. We've also got great forward visibility. Love these really thin A pillars here and the setback mirrors. Really, really good forward visibility. So there you have it, the new turbocharged Honda CRV. Very impressive vehicle, lovely and spacious inside, very practical, love the refinement as well, and a magic ride handling balance. Well done, Honda. But the big questions are, is it worth the price premium over the previous generation CRV? And can it tackle the Toyota RAV4, Australia's favorite midsize SUV? Leave any thoughts in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like. It really helps us out. Also subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.